Welcome to the podcast. This is The Gathering Greenhouse, a podcast to help us grow. One last word. I thought you'd get it. Oh, together? Because we're doing it together. Oh, I thought, see, I thought you were trying to just show Steve up and. No, it was, it was symbolic because, oh, you know, together. Together, yeah. There's. It, it's pretty awesome how together has the word two in it. To gather. To, but it, it also means you have to have at least two to people. Gather. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. That'll, Add a double. That'll, that'll preach in some churches. Together. Yeah. That'd actually be really interesting to like split it up and add a W in it and like do a whole, how you have to have two gather two people to at least Ooh. gather. And mm. I don't know. Yeah. There's probably some, some sort of we could do off that. Probably. All right. So Steve's still not here. He's still You've not here. He's been on vacation for like six weeks now. I actually forgot Steve existed for a minute. <laughs> Just kidding. Anyone who was at the church picnic really felt Steve's absence. So <laughs> very, nobody very saw him. Nobody saw him. Yeah. But um, he was there in spirit. I he, believe it. Right. Yeah. I, I don't even know if he knew it was Sunday. I don't know where he is. He's gallivanting around the, the West in a covered wagon or something. Yep. Yeah. But all that means to us is he doesn't have gas station snacks for us today. He doesn't. And I'm very disappointed. I am incredibly I just, disappointed. I was expecting there to be a, like a package in here. I thought he would have planned ahead. Yeah. Right. So, Steve, uh, you have two weeks to bring us some snacks um, and souvenirs. I would love a T-shirt, but... Yeah, yeah, like I went to Yellowstone, or somebody went to Yellowstone. Yeah, someone needed to Yellowstone. And all, got, <laughs> and all I got was just lousy. Yeah. I, I, think, I would like it, though. Well, because so like that bridge just went out in Yellowstone. Did you hear about this? I haven't. Like some freight that. train, like, bridge broke in the Yellowstone River. So it might be cool, like, if Steve could take a picture of that, then we could make a T-shirt out of the picture. Mm. All right. That'd be cool. I don't That'd know what it cool would too. say. Like, this train fell into the Yellowstone River and all I got was this lousy t-shirt or something like that. It feels slightly morbid. I don't know. Well, but. it was a freight train. So oh, yeah. No yeah, worries then. Yeah. 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 So it's just. I'm sure everyone know. was fine. Right. I mean, people didn't need that stuff anyways. Materialism yeah. is bad. Exactly. Right. So we're, just, we're helping people learn to be content with what they have <laughs> or with what they don't have. We're going to find out it was carrying like life-saving medicine or something to some and then we'll feel village. really bad yeah. <laughs> there's no remote villages Where's everything it? out there is remote <laughs> well it's not, they're not remote i mean yeah I mean, like cars can get there that's true actually i would love to live in one of those places i feel like when i retire that would be an amazing like just to yeah. disappear and live off the land yeah and, yeah yeah i just cities aren't for me <laughs> all right so hey i got a game yeah. for us today what's our game all right so we're gonna we're gonna think about fast food all right because i think probably you and i are are obviously the experts oh, in definitely, fast food definitely i i would say if there's one area in my life that i have the uh, credibility to say that i'm an expert <laughs> it's fast food you never worked in fast food though no yeah but i did uh, for everyone's benefit i didn't work in fast food. okay i could not right. remember orders really in my life you don't have to remember. They're all you like put printed the, yeah, out for you. That's true. Yeah. I, maybe I could. Yeah. So that, that'd be a funny uh, video we could do. Uh, all of us like go work a shift at some restaurant. Oh, that'd be awesome. Happens. Yeah. 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 So I worked, I worked Burger King. You did. And, you know, I actually did fast, uh, the, the drive through late night drive through, which was kind of a fun, fun job because there were really only three of us in the restaurant. There was me, <laughs> there was a girl in the kitchen and there was the manager who just sat in his office and did nothing. Sounds like an awesome gig. So, yeah. So I'd have to take take the order in the back window and then and people would pay me. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'd run up to the front and pass the food out. And people would just look at me like, weren't, weren't, weren't you right back there? The upside of it was, you know, if there's ever a lull, we could just eat the food. <laughs> and I, I mean, this was before Burger King switched their fries. Okay. Right? Yeah. I mean, their fries are terrible now. And that's probably the reason they're going out of business. But... But I, I can't figure out why Burger Kings are closing all over the place because it's substantially better than McDonald's. Right. And I would say it's actually, I, I think it's better than Wendy's. Mm -hmm. But mm, I, yeah, so, a lot of it is. I would say, yeah, a lot of it's better than Wendy's. Uh, but I don't know a ton of people who love Burger King. Like, I think we're a minority yeah. of people. I, I think you've got about 20 years of bad decisions. Yeah. I think that's that's the issue. They had a great product. They still have a great product, but 20 years of bad decisions. All right, yeah, that's so another sermon illustration you could use right yeah, there. There you go. Here's, a, here's <laughs> well, I can do that right. I'll do the hot dog sermon. 
Yeah, the, and Burger then I'll do King. the Burger King sermon. <laughs> yeah. Why are hot dogs still like delicious and everyone loves hot dogs still, but nobody loves Burger King? That's all part of the sermon. Yeah. I like so it. you have to wait I for like it. it. All right. So here's the game for today. All right. We're going to talk about sandwiches. And like we're going sandwiches. to come up with, with three medal winners. So a bronze medal, a silver medal, and a gold medal winner. What is the best fast food sandwich? All, All right. right. And it can be anything. Any fast food sandwich you want, what is, what is the best? Um, so there you go. All right. So bronze medal. Bronze medal. Are you ready? Yes. So I'm actually going to uh, go with the Chick-fil-A sandwich for bronze. Just a straight up original, the, the original Chick Fil A sandwich, pickle. It's, it's never bad. It's always wonderful. Um, I never am upset mm-hmm. when I get to have one. Mm-hmm. Not that you could be upset, uh, upset no. about it, but it's Christian chicken. It's Christian chicken. Yeah, I feel a little bit more unhealthy, but doubly twice as holy. You know what I'm saying? Like you mean Chick Fil A? It's probably the healthiest sandwich that's going to get named in this whole thing. Oh yeah, probably. But it, you right. know, I still feel yeah. So what do you put on it? Do you put anything on it? I do a little bit of mayo. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I like all their sauces, like Chick-fil-A sauce, but I feel like my go-to is just a little bit of mayo right. with the pickle, mm-hmm. and it's, it's all right. good. That's good. All right. So my bronze medal winner is the Arby's Beef and Cheddar. Just super classic sandwich. Yep. A lot of people maybe don't like it as much because of the. it's got like the squeezy cheesy. Yep. Um, but to me, but I, that's what makes a sandwich. Yeah, I say, if you swap that out for like regular cheese, it wouldn't be good. It's not, no, 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 not nearly as good. That's, yeah, yeah that, that's what makes a sandwich. So no, it's, it's a really good, a really good option. Yeah. And Arby's it's got sauce, the, the special or, bun too. So it's got yep. like the, like the onions on the bun. Yep. Mm. Kind of getting hungry for we're, one right now. We're going to Arby's after this? Yeah, I think maybe <laughs> we are. Should I go grab some now while... Can can you be back by the end of the podcast? Matt, you have 15 minutes, and then we'll eat beef and cheddars at the end. Most likely. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the only problem is, is that Arby's is so slow. I'll say uh, you're 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 stretching fast food there with uh, yeah, Arby's. Yeah, you are. Yep. But yep. It's because they make it, it fresh. And it has a drive through Yeah, fresh, air quotes. <laughs> Arby's has some good sandwiches. Like, uh, Absolutely. Even they're like, you know, just like turkey sandwich is good, so... Yeah. Have you had their sliders? Oh, those things are amazing. I know. The spicy chicken one, the buffalo chicken one. Yeah. Have you had the pizza slider? <sighs> no. You don't think it's going to be good. And and as it goes into your mouth, you still don't think it's going to be good. <laughs> but after you eat it. But, <laughs> so you finish it and you're like, oh, I guess I did like that. <laughs> have another. <laughs> that, was, that was good. It, however, is not a metal winner for me. So, so a, uh, a slider is interesting because it's like four of them equal one burger. Mm-hmm. And I could eat like one burger and be fine. But sliders, I'm like, give me eight. You know what I'm saying? Like you can just like keep oh, going yeah. with sliders. It's like a, I saw this uh, joke or a meme. It was like, nobody would order 20 tortillas, but we'll eat 20 tortillas worth of tortilla chips. That's good. That's you know a valid point. Yeah, and like, that's absolutely that is true. so weird. I would never be like, yeah, 20, 20 tortillas sound reasonable, but mm-hmm. yeah, I'll eat the whole bag of tortilla chips. So there's a sermon illustration there too, right? That That I would never do that big sin. Right. But I'm going to do these 20 little sins. But if I divide that same big sin up, and what you realize is you end up in the same place. And well, you know. J- well, as James say, you know, one sin is all it takes, right? Is that a Dua Lipa? Dua, Dua Lupa? What's, what's her name? Dua Lupa. Dua Lupa, yeah. Dua Lupa song, Dua One Lupa. Sin is All It Takes. Is that? I don't know. I'm not with the pop culture. Do you know what I'm talking about? It, it's, it's one kiss is all it takes, right? Same thing. I know this because she's a Liverpool fan, not because I know anything else about her, but. It's like, it's a Liverpool song. Have you ever wondered the origins of that name? Nope. Liverpool. Oh, Liverpool? Like, is it literal? Was there a pool full of liver somewhere? <laughs> I, I, it, it's, I don't know. It, it's on the, um, the, the Mercy River. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Mercy's a hospital. So <laughs> maybe I'm just kidding. Hmm. <laughs> Matt looked it up for us. Yeah. The name comes from the old English river, a meaning thick or or muddy. So, yeah, that makes sense. A muddy pool yeah. uh, so, next to a river. Well, I, actually, so my hometown, Muskegon, um, it literally comes from the word muddy waters. So it's almost like the same thing, right? So muddy waters. And it's because you have a, a big river that goes across the state yep. of Michigan and, it, and everything around right it. there. And so you got these big marshes everywhere. Yeah. All right. Good to know. All right. So yeah, silver, silver metal. metal, silver metal. So I'm a, I'm actually going to put Penn Station's Italian sub mm. warm. Okay. 
Yeah. So we're borderline whether that's fast food, but yeah, I, I think it's it not counts. fast, but I feel like it's in that quality. All right. So it's counter service, right? Yep. It's greasy. It's great. <laughs> it meets the minimum standard of greasiness. Okay. All right. Um, you get a meal for less than $20. Yeah. <laughs> These be, days used to be 10. 10. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You know, they have fries. They have fr- mm-hmm. Okay. All right. You know, I think that's yeah. important. You you wait for your food. They don't bring it to you. Correct. Right. So all those they things. still ask for tips. You know, everybody asks. Everyone for tips. asks for tips. Now. I <laughs> Sign your name and also twenty percent. If, this, tip if for, this was the Grumpy David podcast, <laughs> I would be tips. going off on <laughs> tips right now. I'm just waiting for gas stations to start asking for tips. <laughs> you know. Okay. Well, no, 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 no. In Oregon, do they have uh, attendance? You can't. Yeah, you can't pump your own gas. Like they I think had, New Jersey is the same. Yeah, way. and so we we had to learn that the first time we were out there, we were bringing our rental car back, and I got out to pump the gas, and this guy comes running. Out, no, 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 no! Like, what's going on? <laughs> That's <laughs> illegal. Yeah. All right. So my silver is going to be uh, the Chick Fil A. All right. The breakfast minis. Oh, so kind yeah. of sliders, like breakfast sliders. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which are they're fantastic. And then you got the little chicken nuggets and everybody loves Chick-fil-A chicken nuggets. And they're in those buns that have, yeah. I don't know, is it honey? Is it, yeah, yeah, it's gotta be honey. It's, it's sugary. It's so oh. good. So yeah. Good. That sweet and savory mix is. Mm. Yeah. 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 I say I, it, it didn't make my list, but the Chick-fil-A chicken biscuit is one of the best things ever. Yeah. I, I th- you know, as always, you can't go wrong at Chick-fil-A. No. Right. I mean, their breakfast burrito. That's yeah, super good. good. So yep. it's got like the potatoes in it. Um, yeah, just you know, maybe I am just really bummed out that we still don't have our Chick-fil-A finished. Right. Over here. I actually tried to go there the other day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was so disappointed. Nate uh, Nate Harriman works or, or I guess isn't working there right yeah. now, but uh every time I see him I'm like, so how long until yeah. I can have Chick-fil-A again? <laughs> well, I've I've seen him in the drive through line at the other one yep. over by Cornerstone. Yep. So. All right. Okay, so gold medal time. Yep. What gold, is it? Gold medal. Uh, for me, I, I'm going to go with Brahms. Uh, you probably have never heard of it. Never heard of it. Um, you have now. Spell it. Uh, B-R-A-U-M-S. B-R-A-U. Why is that not Brahm? Brahm. Is that just an accent thing? Probably. I've always said Brahms. Brahms? Yeah. Brahms. Brahms. That's how we'd say it in yeah. Michigan. <laughs> Brahms. That's from... <laughs> Got a Brahms. But here, let me tell you just the in Minnesota be Brahms, eh? of what Brahms is before I'm I explain. Do all the accents. <laughs> yeah. Brahms. Uh, Brahms is like Oi, a I'm really from good. Australia and we call it Brahms. Brahms. <laughs> <laughs> Put a burger on the Bobby. Um, no, it's it is a just Hi, y'all. Awesome this is George and it's Brown. <laughs> I don't know how you would do the like the southern draw over a, over a vowel like that. Yeah, wrong. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Let's get Rebecca in here. And <laughs> uh, so Brahms is a wonderful burger joint, but it also has a UDF style ice cream counter and a like little grocery store. Um, it it's, sounds like a gas station. It doesn't have gas. It needs gas. If it had gas, it would be a gas. Uh, station. It would be a gas station that serves amazing burgers and uh, ice cream, but it's just so, a restaurant. So, so okay. So let me picture this: you you walk in the front door, yes, and you've got like a mini grocery store in front of you. Nope, it's way off to the side. So you got the, the you counter. walk in burger counter right there. Okay, and then ice cream. Ice cream's right next to the burgers, and then. Somewhere off in the the great beyond is the miniature groceries. Yep. Do they sell for like frozen burgers there? I wouldn't be shocked if they sold like their burgers. own. Yeah. I mean, you you buy milk, eggs, veggies. Uh, you know, it's mostly I'm trying, dairy stuff. I'm trying to think of a something that's like that. I, I've not found anything like that up here. Like uh, that's what I'm saying. It's UDF. I mean, truck stops where that you have like you have a burger the, like the, the the McDonald's or the Wendy's or something. Th- think of a mini Aldi's combined with UDF and insert a really good burger place. And that's that's a. That's I mean, Bronx. it sounds it sounds like a great idea. That's wonderful. I I don't know why they're not bigger than they are. Maybe they don't want to be. That's yeah. Yeah, I don't know. All right, so where are they at? They're in Oklahoma, Missouri. I think there's some in Texas. Um, okay. Fairly small, fairly small chain, but. And what makes their burger so good? Oh, man. I don't even know. It's just a, the patty is one of the best flavors. Okay. Um, they are generous with the toppings. So lots okay. of onion, lettuce, tomato. 
Um, I've never been there and had a not like, you know, when you can tell like a burger set on the the warmer for a little bit. I've never had that experience there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one of those, it's probably because it's like Arby's, it borders on not that fast. Okay. Um, you know, but it's always really fresh. And, you know, every restaurant has an X factor and their X factor is their ice cream. You know, and okay. so, you know, their burger, fries and shake is the best combo. So what, maybe like a Culver's? Culver's with grocery. Yeah. Culver's with grocery. And instead of custard, just regular, just regular ice, ice cream. cream. All right. yep. Cool. So here's the thing. So my for my gold medal, I'm going to go similar but different. So you said one of the reasons you like the burger so much is because they, they're generous with the fixings. Yep. And I'm a not a fixings guy, mm. right? So I, I like to say- like, big burger. And- let, let the burger speak for itself. Yeah. Right? So like at the church picnic yep. on Sunday, I had a burger and I had a dog. And I put a little those, bit of mustard on the dog and nothing else. So those hot dogs speak for themselves. <laughs> oh man, I got I got the last one. <laughs> there were the, they, they had the big ones and the little ones. Well, they had pulled out some of the little ones because they were out. Of, I got yep. the last big one. <laughs> and I was like, I was. I actually had to elbow an old lady out of the way to <laughs> say, How long was the line behind you, and how disappointed were those kids? You know. <laughs> All right, my gold medal sandwich is the Burger King Bacon Double Cheeseburger. That's a good one. Yeah, just really simple, basic, two patties, cheese, bacon, a little bit of ketchup, a little bit of mustard. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, I, Burger King's great. I, I think it is one of the most underrated. Well, it's because they flame ones. broil. They, they yeah. legitimately flame broil their burgers. The, the best thing about it, that's why Burger King uh, – Whenever it's like humid outside and you can just smell it for mm, miles. I hear about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you can't smell. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's one of the few reasons you like it is the strong enough flavor that it like actually kind of gets to you. I do. I, I, so. I, I like me a Burger King burger for sure. Mm, yeah, yeah, that's definitely. All right. So right now in the comments, tell us yours. What is your, you can give us your silver, gold, and bronze, or just tell us your favorite. What's yep. your favorite fast food sandwich? Yes. And we had an off camera debate about whether or not a hot dog is a sandwich. Yeah, we, we figured or is out it a taco. So a hot dog that is intact is mm-hmm. a taco. Correct. But if the bun breaks mm-hmm. and you flip it 90 degrees, it's a hot dog sandwich. Yep. So right. I mean it however yes. you want to approach it. So if you're willing to cut your skyline chili dogs bun mm. you can count that as a sandwich so i, I grew up uh, we often didn't get hot dog buns we just got hot dogs and a piece of white and bread few, yeah and those that's, always that's, broke that's, that's every pastor's yeah. kids experience <laughs> right and it was like the really thin bread so you yeah know. thin bread and like hot dogs that were made out of meat oh. and <sighs> yeah yeah i yeah. swear there was an intact hoof in one of those <laughs> <laughs> So one time, this is the grossest thing I've ever found, but one time when we were in, we were in New Orleans right after the hurricane and, uh, this is not going a good direction. It's, oh, it gets worse. So we were gutting a house on a mission trip. This is really, I'm, we, I'm really nervous. We, we're going to have to put the colored bars on the screen in we, a minute. We, we opened up the cabinet. There was a jar this big of pickled pig hooves. That's not so bad. It's, it I thought it was be like a person or something. <laughs> it was open. There was a jar and there was a pickled head <laughs> in the jar. Now he, now I know why he thought this was going to be bad. <laughs> the other thing that was immediately after finding well, that. Where is it going to go? Grossest thing I've ever heard after the hurricane. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Abandoned house. I mean, it was, <laughs> that wasn't the gross part. They also had an f- intact refrigerator. And the number one thing they said, if you find an intact refrigerator, do not open it. Yeah. Tape it, seal it, call us. We'll come get it. Wow. And you know what we did? Opened it. We said, hey, we just found some crazy things in the cabinets. I wonder what's what in the fridge. It, what could it possibly be in the fridge? Whoosh. We all had to leave the house. It was so incredibly yeah, I'll bet. toxic. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So speaking of refrigerators. Yes. How many... How many hippopotamuses can you fit in a refrigerator? <laughs> are these intact hippopotamuses or yeah. are we butchering them? What, yeah. What's the so yeah. it's just how many? It, um, I have no idea. It this all depends on one. how many elephants you take out of the refrigerator. I knew there was going to be elephants involved. Yes. The elephant jokes are back. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like that one? No. <laughs> Come on now. That was a good one. David, I yeah. loved it. Thank you. All right. <laughs> I feel like elephant jokes are a little polarizing around here. But 
I thought you were going to have like a punchline. I thought that was going to no. be like, no, I don't, like, I'm not going to, I'm, I refuse to make an elephant joke right now. Well, no, I felt like, like the polarizing was setting you up for something, oh, no. I, but no, I just, you know, I feel like half the people were like, this is hilarious. We love elephant jokes. And the other half were going, what is the point of this? <laughs> <at all>? uh, <laughs> you know, like, it's, yeah. I, I think most people who are part of Mensa like elephant jokes. I feel like this is going to be an elephant joke. No, that's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Speaking of toxic jokes. Yeah. We have a new sermon series that starts this Sunday for we the do. whole month of Tick July. Toxic. Tick toxic. Yep. All right. Uh, taking James chapter three. So yes. one chapter. Yes. Five weeks. So we're going to get to know that chapter really, really well. Yeah. We better be able by the end of it to just quote it. I think that's. Can't the, you quote it right now? Uh my uh, Awana instructors from growing up would probably be ashamed of me, but no, I, I cannot at the moment. <laughs> you, you just drop a word like Awana and yeah. there's about 30% of the people who will watch this. They know what I'm talking about. The, yeah. And it's, and it's either triggering them or they're having really great memories. Yeah. yeah? yeah. And then the other 70% are like, what's Awana? So what does Awana stand for? What's the acronym? Approved workmen are not ashamed. Boom. Yes. yes. So Awana- Can you sing the song? <laughs> I, re I remember the Sparks song. We are Sparks. Sparks. Uh, but oh, I can't remember. It's, I remember the Pledge of Allegiance. Firmly Awana stands. Firmly Awana stands. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm not going to sing it. I pledge allegiance to the Awana, to the Awana well, flag. About, we, we did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I can't remember the rest of it. But yeah, you did the Pledge of Allegiance to America. Then you did the Pre Pledge of Allegiance- To Awana. To Awana. <laughs> you sang the Awana theme song. And then you had your like- your classes theme song. It's basically, for those of you who don't know, <laughs> Awana is uh, Boy Scouts, but instead of like all like the useful like nature skills, <laughs> they teach you like you just memorize Bible verses. But no, you, and, because in your jewels, in your green jewels, you did some, some of that stuff. There are some yeah. things. Yeah. Like you had to go on a hike. Yes. And, you had to learn how to tie knots. And it used to be much more that way. Mm -hmm. Like uh, like my uniform was like, uh, I was in a, oh, can we even say what I'm what I'm thinking? I don't think we can say that word anymore. Or which what, what are you thinking? Like what what I like people always ask me what's a wanna. Okay, if this has to get censored, it's going to get censored. I I always say, well, basically it looks like Hitler youth. Oh my gosh. <laughs> But so does, does the Boy Scouts. Like, yeah, I the mean, Boy Scouts do too. But I, but yeah. Awana is like gray. So it's even more. So I, I, they they rebranded because that red whole. Red sashes. They went to. You switched. Did you guys have red sashes? So my first year was, uh, I was in, well, I can't remember what that, great was it Braves? Mm, Braves is later, I think. So I, I got to Braves. Yeah. And then they switched from that to something called TNT. Yes. And everything was green. Everything was green. I remember yep. that. I think they were trying to get away, get from, away from the Hitler uniform. youth. Yeah. <laughs> Sparks is that you wear red vest and red cubbies were awesome. blue vest. Um, yeah, and you got your crowns and you, you yeah. know, earned you jewels in the crown. Yep. Yeah. And you like you could get if you go back no, through the books, skipper, you get second. hiker, climber. Yep. yep. We mm -hmm. should have just stolen that for we the summit. We should for the summit. Yeah. Um no, but yeah, I wanna the whole goal is to help kids memorize scripture. Um and uh by the end of it, you know, you've memorized a, quite a significant yeah. portion of the Bible. Yeah. and For sure. All joking aside, I, I do think that I, on on the whole, have a plus, plus oh, side. I, I, I mean, yeah, having gone I'm, through it, I, I just, I'm, I'm actually a big fan of it. You just had to be in the right club. You know, correct. if you were at the wrong yeah. church that was doing it a different right. way, it didn't make yep. it work for you. Yeah. But. Yeah. Like so much of what I know memorized scripture wise is through Awana. Yeah. Now I'm going to just a little piece of trivia for you. I am, I, I did something in Awana that very few people have ever done. What'd you do? All the way through? In the, well, I did that. Yeah. <laughs> but no, in, in the Awana Olympics, did you do Awana Olympics? I did. Did you go to the big competition? Listen, I, I won a state championship in two different states. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Back to back. Like we, one year, West Virginia state champs, the next year, Michigan state champs. We, uh, I went to the, we went to the Florida one when we lived in Florida and we won that, that mm -hmm. year our church won. And, uh, I never went to any, no. but yeah. I always wanted to go to the Wana camp, but I could never go. So yeah, we went uh, to word of life camp. I don't know if you did word of mm -hmm. life. It's a whole nother thing. Yeah. Whole nother conversation. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What are we, we're supposed to be talking about? Oh, TikTok. TikTok. Yeah. Oh, Awana, I would not call tick toxic or toxic. No, absolutely not. It's, no, no. Lots of funny stuff. It's like that that thing in your past that you you laugh about and you joke about because it was funny. Yeah. But it was really valuable because really memorizing well. scripture is good. Well, and parents, you should have your kids memorize scripture. It's good for them. All right. Yeah. 
All right. Awesome. So James three, James three, yeah. which is all about what? So it's, it's about our words, uh, the words we speak and the words we hear. Yeah. Um, and, and that really the, the effect that those words have on the people around us and on our mm-hmm. ourselves. Yep. Um, and so, um, yeah, it, I mean, that's affects everybody in right. every relationship that we all yeah. have. Yeah. So the first half of the chapter really is about, you know, the power of our words. And, and so we're going to, the first half of the series, will focus on that, mm-hmm. you know, how we use our words. And there's, there's some obvious, um, lessons there for how we use social media as well as other things, like the words we speak on social yep. media. But then the second half kind of talks about, uh, a little bit more about the word, the, the words of the world. Yep. And, and we're going to kind of tweak that a little bit. And, and think a little bit about the words we listen to. Yes. So talk, speak to that a little bit. The words we listen to. Yeah. Yes. So, um, well, it, it's it's one of those things. A lot of us like to acknowledge the fact that we have control of the words we say, and we, we want to think so much about what we put out into the world. Um, but what we don't often acknowledge is the fact that what we consume mm-hmm. and the words we hear and what we read informs who we are. And that informs what we speak, okay. right? And so if you really want to be in control of the things you say, you also need to be in control of what you consume. And we can consume our, you know, consume things that are negative, mm-hmm. and we also can consume things that are positive, right? Yep. Um, Awana's coming back. You know, one of the things about Awana is these scriptures. I often don't even remember the the, the reference. I just remember that you the know, truth, yeah. right? Um, your word I have hidden in my heart, so I might not sin against you, right? Nice. What I put in your word is a lamp to my feet lamp to and my a light feet, right? to my path. Yeah, we could probably go back. Yeah, to, all in King James. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, towards the later end, we switched from a King or a, a King James only version to one that was New King James. Nice. And I kept like speaking in King James when I was yeah. Yeah. So, but anyway, uh, what we put in. Um, can either determine if our actions and our deeds and our words are glorifying to God, or if, you know, if we put the wrong things in, it can Mm be, um, you know, negative and really hurt the people around us. Yeah. So did you notice, I know you did, that McDonald's didn't make it into any of our lists? Nope. Do you know why? Because the ingredients that McDonald's puts into their burgers are junk. Yeah. (laughs) Right? It's, It's trash. They are the uh, they are the king of fast. Yep, but they don't make food. So so get this then. When we allow trash into our lives, what what's going to come out? It's going to come out fast, and it's yep. going to be garbage. That's our words, right? Yep. So we got to watch what comes in, so that we can watch what well, goes and, out. Uh, I've been thinking about this is um, to, to borrow the what we eat analogy is um, I can choose to start eating all the broccoli in the world I want. But if I keep eating the potato chips, it doesn't matter how much broccoli I consume, right? Right. And so there is this point at which we have, it's not just about getting enough good that we might somehow counteract the bad. Right. It's like we yeah. have to increase the good and diminish the bad. Yeah. And, and that's hard to do, um, especially with social media, um, which mm-hmm. is why we're kind of focusing in on social media. But this isn't limited to social right. media at yeah. all. So so th- let's let's do this. So we're gonna we're gonna finish up. Yeah. Right. We're gonna make a list because. That's me. Yeah. I love lists. So we're going to list five different kinds of people who five should people. be part of this series. And I, I'll go first. So I'll do three and then you'll have to do two. Yeah. Okay. So I'll go first. The first the first person is anybody who uses words. Yep. Okay. So if you use words, you should probably be part of this series because you're going to learn how to use the right words at the right time. Yep. All right. Okay. Who else? Uh, definitely parents. Yeah. Um, okay. You know, not only for yourself, but... Um, you are responsible for um, your kids and what they consume and what they put out, right? And we all want our kids to be people who who speak truth and speak um, that which is good and holy into the world. Their actions are good. Um, and by helping them learn what they should consume, but even being that safety net of I'm going to make sure you're not consuming mm-hmm. the bad things um, really determines the behavior and the, the attitudes that your kids grow into. Yeah. Um, so I think that's incredibly important. Okay. Good one. All right. I'm going to say anybody who wants to be an influencer on social media. So mm-hmm. if you want to make an impact, like if you want to make like the right kind of impact on social media, this is the series Absolutely. for you, right? Okay. Your turn. Yeah. Um, everybody who wants to not be influenced yes. right, uh, by social media. Um, you may have the attitude that you're not, but you are. We all are affected by this. It's too big. All of us are affected. Um, and if you're maybe the person who lives in the middle of nowhere, has no communication with people, 
then you're probably not watching mm-hmm. this, right? <laughs> but if, if you have that attitude, um, maybe you are being exposed to some things in other places in your life that you need to be made aware of um, that are affecting you um, mm-hmm. in a similar way that social media affects a lot of people. All right, good. Do you have any more? We have one more to one more one to more go. to go. Um, um, so, do you have one? I, I I can do one. Sure. Yeah. All right. So I'll go with uh, if you have ever been in conflict, because most of yep. the time conflict is a result of the words. Absolutely. Right. It's either the words we're using or the words we're not listening to well. Mm-hmm. So, well, and, and to spin off that, like the the what I put in determines how I see your actions and nice. your words. Right. Yep. So, um, if I am Filling myself with content, um, so let's say scripture, right, stuff that is leading me to be a more gracious person. Mm-hmm. I'm more likely to see, like, the negative things you might do or say. Um, I might have more grace and forgiveness for that. might seem in that light, through, mm-hmm. see you through Jesus' eyes. But if I'm filling myself with things that are telling me to value myself higher and what I want, and you say something that I don't agree with, it's very easy for me to see that as um, an offense, something yeah. that you are doing against me. When reality is a lot of the times our offense is not based. It yeah. is our perception is causing that. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So the, the series is called Tick Toxic. Yes. Um, but even if you don't even know what TikTok is, this is gonna be a good Absolutely. series. Like Absolutely. I don't have TikTok. I, I don't know, have TikTok. I, right. <laughs> but but that's okay. Yeah. And even if you're not on social media and don't care about social media, th- there's going to be some really yes. good stuff because the foundation of this series is James chapter three. So it's the Bible and, yep. and that's really helpful. So anybody really can benefit from this series Absolutely. and we're not going to bash social media. I mean, maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit. I mean, I think it's, it's one of those things where um, it's real tempting to uh, say, oh, social media is um, a negative thing, right. Mm -hmm. And to go against it. But the reality is it's a, um, I don't want to say it necessarily a tool, but it, it, it's like all technology. It's, it's about how we use it, how we engage with it Mm -hmm. and how we let it affect us. Right. And, and for you, um, your boundaries that you might have to have a social media are different than mine, you know? So I, I personally have decided I don't want TikTok, right. I, I have, it's, it's, too difficult for me to create the healthy boundaries with it and have it. Mm-hmm. So it's easier to just say, no, I don't want it. Yeah. Um, but I don't think that's for everybody. Right. You know, and, and I, you know, but I think there's a lot of us who don't have healthy mm-hmm. boundaries to begin with. So yeah. we, we need to start thinking about that. There is a way to throw out the dirty bath water without throwing out the baby. Yes. So we're going to talk about how to get rid of the dirty bath water, but still eat the baby. Eat the baby. Well, <laughs> all right. Hey, that's all we've got for you today. Hopefully you'll join us on Sunday for part one of Tick Toxic. And uh, next week, kind of a fun podcast. Yeah, I think we're going to do uh, some best of clips over all the right. past few weeks. Uh, all right. So it should be so pretty that'll good. That'll be our 4th of July celebration. 4th of July, yeah. And then we'll be back at it in two weeks and Steve will be back with, with some food. With awesome food for us. All right. Until then, I'm David. I'm John. See ya.